Welcome to module 33 of database management systems. This is uh, on transactions again. This is the third and uh, closing module on transactions and we will uh, discuss uh, recoverability issues and some more of the serializability issues in this uh, uh, module. In the last module, we have talked at length about uh, serializability and specifically we looked at what is known as conflict serializability and the algorithm to detect that. Uh, now, we would uh, bring in another perspective is uh, if while a transaction is in execution, what if uh, the system would fail? The failure may be due to hardware, software, various different uh, reasons, power outage, uh, disk crash and so on. So, why when that happens, the database is likely to come into an inconsistent state. So, we would like to uh, discuss how to recover from that inconsistent state and bring it back to a consistent state. We would also look at that uh, uh, going forward from conflict serializability, what are the other notions of serializability that can be used to serialize transactions and we uh, will look at a weaker definition of serializability known as view serializability, which can serialize more schedules than what conflict serializability can give us. So, these are the topics to discuss and we start with uh, recoverability and isolation. So, what we have done is uh, we have seen the serializability help us if we think in terms of the acid properties uh, that uh, we started by defining as the desirable properties of the transactions. We I have seen that the serializability significantly helps us to achieve isolation and consistency of a schedule. Yet, uh, the atomicity and consistency may be compromised if there is a system failure. So, we had talked about this example uh, a bit earlier, again let us take a look. So, this is a uh, transaction where uh, an amount of uh, 50 dollars is being transferred from account A to account B. So, we first read debit and then write uh, on account A and then read credit and write to account B and we have added a seventh uh, instruction which is commit and I will talk more about that uh, in this module, which makes the changes to A and B permanent and shows the result to the user as well. Now, what happens if the system fails? Uh, between uh, step 3 and uh, after step 3 when A has been written and uh, between before step 4, step 6 when uh, B has finally been written. So, naturally uh, 50 dollars will simply disappear because what has been debited from A and will be available to be seen in uh, account A will the corresponding credit will not be visible. So, this leads to inconsistent state and to handle that what we need to do is to roll back the transaction, which means that we need to undo the changes that we have already done. So, we have to again go back to account A and uh, write a new value, which was the earlier value, the value before the debit had happened. And this process of uh, uh, restoring the consistency back to the database is known as the recovery process. So, we say that, uh, so let us define a schedule to be recoverable if a transaction T j reads a data uh, previously written by a transaction T i, then the commit operation of T i must appear before the commit operation of T j. If that happens, then that is the earlier transaction which has written the data and uh, uh, T j the later transaction which is reading that data, the earlier transaction has to commit that is. Uh, uh, make the changes uh, permanent in the database before T j actually reads it. If that happens, then we say that that schedule is a recoverable say, schedule. So, consider a uh, following schedule of transactions T 8 and T 9, where uh, uh, T 8 has read and written A, but has not committed. That means, some more tasks in T 8 are still pending, it has not finished, but T 9 then reads A, which is uh, in terms of serializability, it is uh, fine, but uh, then T 9 commits and then T 8 is again trying to read uh, uh, B, it continues. So, what happens is uh, what if the transaction 
will fail the transaction T 9 will fail immediately after the read operation. So, what will happen uh, uh, I am sorry if, uh, if T 8 uh, abots uh, in between then what will happen that T 9 would have read because say in read B of, of T 8 T 8 uh, abots that it, it fails then uh, T 9 has already read the intermediate value of E and has committed which means it has possibly shown it to the user, but T 8 since it has bought it since it has failed it has to be rolled back and the original value of A will be rolled back which is different from what has already been uh, shown to the user and he will reach an inconsistent state. So, this is an example of a uh, schedule which is not uh, recoverable. Now, let us also observe that a single transaction failure not only means uh, that one transaction needs to be rolled back, but it could have a cascading effect that is a series of transaction may require a rollback. So, here is an example of T 10, T 11 and T 12. So, T 10 uh, reads uh, A and B and writes A and then T 11 reads and writes A and T 12 reads A and at that time if T 10 fails if that aborts then naturally it is not enough to simply uh, roll back T 10 because uh, if we roll back T 10 then we uh, the value of A goes back to the original and uh, T 11 would have a wrong uh, value which T 10 had written, but has now been undone has now been rolled back. So, it means that T 11 will also have to be rolled back. Similarly, if that is rolled back then naturally T 12 also have to be rolled back and so on. And when this um, rolling back goes from one transaction to the other we say this is a cascading rollback and this can lead to a significant amount of work. So, what we would prefer is uh, if we could have schedules where such cascading uh, rollback is not required. So, and, and there is a there is a condition uh, through which you can achieve that. So, if you have a pair of transaction T i and T j, so that T j reads a data item previously written by T i, then the commit operation of T i has to happen before the read operation of T j, which means that uh, if said in other words that um, uh, T j should read only read values which are already committed and not read intermediate temporary values of other transactions. So, every cascadable uh, schedule is also recoverable because you can individually recover that and it is desirable to restrict schedules to those which are cascadeless as far as possible we will see that in non, not all cases that is possible, but if it is possible we would like schedules which are uh, cascadeless so that our rollback work the extra work can be minimized. So, here is an example which we had just seen which is not a cascadable schedule. So, going forward let us uh, take a couple of uh, examples uh, of very uh, similar uh, uh, transactions uh, and uh, we would see when their schedules are irrecoverable when their cascade uh, uh, dead recovery is possible uh, cascaded rollback is possible and when cascade less rollback is possible. So, if you so here what I have uh, done is I have shown uh, here the two transactions T 1 and T 2 and uh, this is what uh, transaction T 1 is doing and we assume that the in the in the database the initial value of A is 5000. So, this is uh, what will happen A is read here and this value is is a different A this is in the buffer or the memory uh, of T 1 transaction where A becomes 5000 then you uh, subtract 1000 and then you write back the moment you write back in the database in between the value in the database is not changing it is only that uh, value is only in the buffer and when you write back the value in the database has changed. And then transaction T 2 reads that value. So, in its local buffer A becomes uh, 4000 it increments by 500 and then writes it back and when that happens then in the database also the value has changed to 4500. And then T 2 commits and at this point let us assume that uh, there was uh, there was a failure. So, this is the point where there was a failure there were other instructions in T 1 as well which is not of our interest right now and uh, then uh, T 1 would have committed, but what happens if the failure happens at this point naturally the T 1 needs to roll back T 1 needs to undo this and set the this value 5000 back into the database 
but uh, that would mean that uh, what uh, T 2 has committed T 2 has already committed this value 4500 uh, in the database and therefore, that has been uh, probably been used in other places and shown to the user that will create an inconsistency in the database. So, these are this is a schedule of T 1 and T 2 which cannot be recovered from. So, let us uh, uh, so what it has what has been violated that T 2 has actually um, uh, read a, a value which was uh, in transit and then it has already committed based on that red value. Now, uh, let us uh, uh, look into the next. Uh, so, what uh, has been done here that the all the changes are, are, are the same, but uh, only point that we have done is we have changed the point where the commit uh, happens. Again still the T 2 is reading the same value in R in A and uh, is making the updates uh, 4500, but uh, the commit happens at a later point of time after the commit of this uh, transaction T 1 has uh, taken place. So, this is recoverable, but if we want to recover uh, T 1 naturally uh, that means that uh, for T 1 to be uh, recovered I also need to recover T 2 because T 2 is uh, used a value which is not going to be the value in after the rollback of T 1 has happened T 2 has used 4000, but after the rollback the value in the database will be back to 5000. So, it is uh, the rollback is required for T 1 as well as in T 2. So, this is a case of cascaded uh, cascading rollback that has happened. So, it is more work is being done and that has happened because T 2 now uh, here the rollback is possible because T 2 is committing after T 1. So, the transaction it is reading from it is actually committing the changes after that uh, source transaction has committed. So, that satisfies the condition of recoverable schedule. So, you are able to recover, but it still required the cascading because uh, T 1 had read a value in uh, here uh, of A which was not yet committed. So, if we would have committed that then uh, we would have been able to uh, actually create a uh, schedule which is cascade less as we will see in the next uh, uh, slide. So, now I what uh, the change that has happened is the uh, commit is done right after uh, writing the value of A and T 2 reads that only after that commit has happened earlier it was reading before that commit has happened. So, once T 2 reads it after this uh, uh, commit. So, if there is some there is some requirement of uh, uh, if there is some situation of uh, rollback then only T 1 needs to be rolled back and T 2 does not uh, need to be a rolled back because it has used a value which is already committed. So, this is uh, the basic uh, uh, through the example you can clearly see what is how the rollback can happen and in a later module we will discuss uh, the processes of how to do this kind of rollback uh, the cascading and non cascading. Uh, both kinds uh, and show how to uh, go ahead with that, but now for now what we learn is uh, schedules uh, need to be recoverable and preferably cascade less uh, rollback uh, recovery schedules are preferred in case of database transactions. Now, let us uh, uh, move on and uh, uh, talk little bit about what is available in SQL language in terms of handling transactions. So, SQL we have seen the uh, kind of uh, DDL data definition and data manipulation language uh, paths and uh, those were uh, discussed in terms of our interactive session as well. Uh, as a part of uh, data manipulation it is also possible to specify certain uh, specific uh, transaction events. So, a transaction in SQL typically begins implicitly and it ends by a commit work which says that yes, you commit the current transaction that is make all the changes uh, permanent in the database make it visible to the user and begin a new work or you could roll back uh, the transaction which means that all the changes that you had done are rolled back and uh, the transaction basically abots. So, in almost all uh, systems by default uh, every SQL statement commit implicitly and uh, if it is been able to execute successfully otherwise it rolls back 
and this implicit commit can be controlled also it can be uh, in different system there are different ways to control that and say that I do not want implicit uh, commit I would only want commit to be done explicitly. So, for that purpose uh, a part of SQL called the transaction control language has different instructions so, commit to save the changes roll back to roll back the changes undo the changes and also to do some do it in some controlled way by defining save point and uh, you can also set uh, the uh, a particular name to a transaction and its behavior. So, let us uh, look at examples uh, for doing that uh, soon and uh, these uh, um, uh, TCL commands are are used with uh, specific DML commands they are meaningful in terms of insert update and delete only. For example, if you are creating a database or uh, you are doing a select to data retrieval then these uh, instructions have no role in those transactions. So, commit uh, is a transaction um, uh, command which is used to save changes and make them permanent based on what has been invoked. So, here you see the example of a um, uh, customer database and what I am showing is uh, if you this is the initial uh, state of that uh, table and uh, before any value has been deleted and if you do select start from customers these 7 records is what you get to see. In view of that you do a delete and then you commit the delete. So, you say that I have deleted and make that uh, deletion permanent. So, deleting based on age. So, this uh, record is supposed to be get deleted and this record is supposed to get deleted and after I have done the commit then again if I do the same uh, uh, data retrieval and now I get to see 5 records only the 2 uh, record number 2 and record number 4 have been permanently deleted. So, this is the way you can uh, explicitly do commit and make the changes permanent. In terms of rollback, it is a command which is used to undo transactions uh, that is the changes that have already not been saved to the database uh, you can roll back. So, you can roll back or undo transactions uh, only back up in history up to the last commit or uh, the last uh, rollback command was issued on this. So, again looking at the same example this is the initial uh, state and then you did a delete as we did last time. So, these two records are uh, to be deleted, but then instead of commit we have given a rollback. So, as you give rollback this deletion operations get undone. So, these two records are again back to the table and uh, so after the rollback if I again do the select I will get to see the two uh, records back in my list. So, this is the purpose of the rollback command. Now, you can uh, a transactions often could be long. So, within the transaction you may want to mark certain points. So, that in case you roll back or you need to roll back you can roll back to that particular point and those points are uh, in the transaction are known as the save point. So, this is the uh, format use a save point and give it a name and then later on you can use uh, those uh, save points for your uh, purpose of rollback. So, you are uh, again if you are doing a rollback then you instead of just doing rollback you now use the save point id that you had used in naming that particular point up to which you want to roll back and do a rollback and that will happen only up to that point. So, let us uh, look at an example. So, here it is a, a series of uh, instructions in a, in a DML transaction. So, I initially set uh, SP 1 as a save point that is I may want to roll back to the beginning. Then I delete uh, one record say ID 1. So, one record gets deleted then I again save another uh, uh, save point uh, another save point SP 2 so, this was SP 1 and then delete a second record another save point delete another record. So, now I have a control to undo at this point I have a control to undo to 3 uh, points. For example, if I do a rollback to SP 3 I will roll back to this point where only this record will be deletion of this record will be undone, but the first two records will still look uh, show as deleted. But if I roll back to save point SP 2 then two records ID 2 and ID 3 that were deleted their deletion will be undone and only one deletion will look up. Similarly, if I roll back to SP 1 it will show that no deletion has 
at all happened. So, if I do that uh, on the uh, this is the initial state on the left the initial state of the database three records have been deleted and then I do undo of the first uh, deletion of the first two and uh, so I roll back to sp2. So, then when I undo the deletion of the last two records then the uh, what I see is uh, the records which are marked as uh, id 2 and id 3 which were uh, done after sp 2 was marked which were deleted after sp 2 were marked they are back into the table whereas, the deletion of sp 1 is still uh, in effect and therefore, uh, the deletion that was done after sp 1 that is of record id 1 uh, is still missing and in this way you can control and roll back to any specific point in a database in a database transaction. Uh, you can once you have marked a save point you can also release the save point that is uh, you can choose to forget that save point. Uh, once the save point uh, has been released you cannot roll back uh, to that save point naturally. You can use set transaction uh, command to initiate a database transaction also and it is typically used to specify the characteristics of the transaction particularly if you want to say whether a transaction is a read only transaction or a read write transaction then you can do it in this way you can say set transaction and give a read or write flag read or write or read only flag for that. Uh, let us quickly take a look at uh, uh, a different form of serializability uh, besides the conflict serializability this is called view serializability. So, in terms of view serializability we again define what is uh, known as when are two tran, uh, schedules uh, defined to be view equivalent earlier you remember we defined two uh, uh, schedules to be conflict equivalent now we are defining view equivalent. So, there are three conditions the conditions are simple what conditions say is a two tran, uh, schedules are view equivalent if the transaction the initial value that a transaction reads is same in both these schedules for every transaction the initial value that it reads must be the same uh, between the two schedules. Similarly, the third condition says that the final write that is done final value that it writes every transaction writes in both the schedules must be the same the same the same writes should operate. And uh, the second condition is the is a read write pair that uh, every transaction uh, when it performs a read on the data item it must read from the write corresponding write in the uh, other schedule in by the same by the transaction the which did the write. So, I always initialize start with the same initial values for every data item in both schedules I always read from the corresponding write in the same schedule in the two schedules and I must write the final uh, in every transaction every data item must be written in the same way in the two schedules. So, this is the uh, again and the equivalence is based uh, purely on read write uh, uh, alone as is the case of uh, conflict uh, equivalence also. So, given uh, the definition of uh, view uh, equivalence we can say schedule is uh, view serializable if it is view equivalent to a serial schedule earlier we said said that a schedule is conflict serializable if it is conflict equivalent to a serial schedule now we are defining the view serializability. Uh, with a little bit of thought you can uh, convince yourself that every conflict serializable schedule is also view serializable, but the reverse is not true. So, here is a schedule which is uh, view serializable, but is not conflict serializable you, you know this is not uh, conflict uh, uh, serializable because cert certainly you cannot make it into a uh, serial uh, schedule make it equivalent to a serial schedule because you cannot move this write queue above uh, the write queue of uh, T 28 or of uh, T 29, uh, you cannot move this uh, either. So, uh, given that, uh, but if you look in terms of the view equivalence, then you will say that this is uh, uh, equivalent to a serial schedule and what should be the serial schedule? Obviously, there are uh, 6 choices because there are 3 schedules. So, there are 6 possible permutations which give you 6 different serial schedules and if in that so first condition says that I must uh, read from the same value. So, obviously, T 27 reads the initial value of Q. So, T 27 has to be the first transaction. It the third condition says that I must do the same write T 
T 29 does the final right here. So, the in the serial schedule also T 29 must be the last one. So, T 28 has to be the middle one. So, the serial schedule that this is equivalent to is T 27, T 28, T 29 and uh, the uh, one reads and uh, the other two writes and uh, T 29 performs a final write. So, you can see that this is a this is not a conflict serializable, but this is uh, view serializable. And uh, if you note the view serializability moment you have view serializability and uh, you may not have conflict serializability, then you must be having certain blind writes. These are called blind writes. These are blind write in the sense that here you are writing the value of q in uh, T 28 without having read its uh, current or previous value. So, you have just blindly you have just computed some value and you are writing to that. So, if a schedule is not conflict serializable, but is view serializable, it must have performed some blind writes where it has written uh, data without actually reading it. So, this is a weaker form of uh, serializability that is possible. Now, the question is uh, similar to uh, conflict uh, serializability where we saw that uh, a, a schedule can be conflict uh, serializable if its corresponding precedence graph is acyclic. So, um, uh, we would like to extend find out similar test for view serializability, but uh, as it turns out that uh, trying to find out uh, this uh, uh, is uh, exponential in cost in terms of the size of the precedence graph. So, it has been proved that uh, the problem of checking whether a schedule is view serializable is in the class of uh, NP complete problems. So, if you are um, uh, good in algorithms, you will know what NP problems are and when are problems uh, called NP complete. In very simple terms, even if you are not uh, familiar with that depth of uh, algorithms, uh, you can uh, simply issue note that if an algorithm is NP complete then it is extremely unlikely that uh, there exist an efficient algorithm for it. There exist any kind of uh, polynomial time algorithm, it is extremely unlikely, still not, it is still an open problem in computer science whether at all uh, polynomial algorithm exists for NP complete problems, but it is extremely unlikely that an efficient algorithm will exist. You may have some approximate algorithms which can give sufficiency conditions, which can say that well, if these conditions are satisfied, then necessarily a schedule is view serializable, uh, but not a sufficient condition, uh, not a necessary condition. That is, uh, in other words, uh, that uh, there may be some schedules which do not satisfy the sufficient condition, but are still view serializable. So, using view serializability have certain uh, problems. So, here uh, I have worked out a uh, longer uh, problem in terms of the view serializability to check that. So, it is kind of a brute force algorithm. So, if you see this is the schedule given, there are two data items A and B and there are three transactions T 1, T 2, T 3. Since there are three transactions, then if I want to prove if it is view serializable, then what I will have to do? I will have to find a one of the possible serial schedules which is view equivalent to this. So, first I list out all the serial schedules given three transactions, there are six serial schedules. And then I first start with condition 3, which is uh, who is doing the last update. So, there are writes are only on B. So, and last of that uh, are being done in all the three transactions. So, there is no write on A. So, the list of final update on A is empty and uh, for B, the order is T 1, T 2, T 3. So, T 3 does the last. So, it must whatever uh, uh, schedule this uh, whatever serial schedule this given schedule S has to be view equivalent to must have T 3 as the last uh, transaction to execute. So, only these two are the candidates which may be view equivalent to this uh, uh, schedule S. So, we reduce down and now we have only to decide whether these two any of these two are view equivalent to the given uh, schedule S. So, moving on uh, with that now next we check condition 1 and condition 2 together. So, condition 1 checks that uh, they must read uh, the same value in both the schedules. So, we see that these are the reads that are happening on A. So, we see that on A there are uh, reads happening I am sorry this is these are the 3 that is uh, reading A. So, it happens in the order of T 2, T 1 and T 3. So, this is what we find. And in terms of B, we find that uh, transaction 2 reads B and 
right set. So, it has to be in that order. So, it uh, reads uh, it does an initial read in terms of T 2 and uh, then the first uh, write of that red value is happening in uh, the transaction T 1 after the update of the read. So, um, uh, that means that uh, whatever uh, schedule we, we uh, look for in terms of view equivalence, they must have in that schedule T 1 must follow T 2. So, T 2 must happen first because it needs to read the initial value and then that initial value is, uh, is uh, uh, used by uh, then there is a write on uh, by T 1. So, T 2 has to come before T 1. So, that means, we are already uh, in terms of uh, uh, only two we have seen that there are two possible candidates based on condition 3 it is T 1 T 3. So, in these two we only can have this one which is satisfying the other conditions and uh, there is no read write uh, sequence. So, we conclude that indeed T 2 T 1 T 3 satisfy all the three conditions of initial read, uh, write after read and the final write conditions and therefore, this uh, given schedule S is actually view equivalent to a serial schedule and it is a view serial uh, schedule and can be used safely for the transaction. There is uh, uh, another example uh, given here, where uh, there is uh, there are four transactions R 1, R 2, R 3 and R 4 and there are two data items A and B and uh, you have to find out uh, establish whether this is view serializable or not. I am not working out uh, this one, this is worked out in the presentation slide, but uh, I will not show it here. You are uh, you should first try it out and then you, uh, once you have been able to do it or you are unable to do that, then you check the solution from the presentation slide. Uh, there are um, uh, different other complex notions of serializability also. For example, if you uh, look at uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, schedule, this actually is a serializable uh, schedule. This is uh, the effect that it produces will be same as uh, the serial schedule of T 1 T 5, but if you go through the definitions of conflict uh, equivalence and view equivalence, you will be able to show that this schedule is neither conflict, conflict serializable nor view serializable, but yet given the uh, particular. So, if you just look at the read write, this is not a serializable schedule in terms of conflict or view equivalence, but given the fact that uh, it actually performs simple add subtract operations on these uh, variables using the properties of add subtract operations, you would be able to uh, you can actually see that this particular uh, schedule actually is a serializable schedule and uh, you will get whatever initial values you start with the value that you will achieve uh, through this schedule and the value that you will achieve with the serial schedule T 1 T 5 are indeed same in every case. But uh, this determining this requires the understanding of other instructions other operations besides the read and write. Uh, so, this is just to show you that uh, using the read write model and uh, conflict and view equivalence are the only not the only ways of uh, getting to serializability, there are more complex models, but we will not go into the depth of uh, these complex uh, serializability aspect. So, uh, we have shown that with uh, we have uh, shown here that with proper planning a database can be recovered back to a consistent state uh, from an inconsistent state in case of system failure and uh, the such a recovery can be through cascaded or cascade less rollback. And we have also introduced a uh, simpler model of serializability in terms of the view serializability, but testing for view serializability is empty complete. So, as an effective algorithm it is not that powerful.